One of the things that new customers appreciate very much from QReader is the speed in which it can begin to work for you. And let me explain what I think is the main reason why it can achieve that. And here in the admin tab, and when you click here on the log source manager icon, here we see all the log sources that I have defined in my demo system, quite a few of them. In fact, uh, there are 249 log sources that I have. And if I sort them here, as you see, by what it is auto discover, the vast majority of them are auto discover. What does auto discovered mean? Well, when QReader sees that any endpoint, any host or IP that it, it doesn't know already about is sending it logs and it sees that and the default parameter is uh, 25 logs in five minutes or less. It says, well, this thing really wants to talk to me, but I don't know it. So let me actually look inside and see if I can identify whether this is a wing collect log or a blue code or a Cisco firewall or whatever. And in the vast majority of the cases, it's capable of just say, yep, I know what this is. And it actually assigns a parser and that's it. The rules begin to work more on those rules in a second. But not everything is auto discoverable. So if I sort the other way around, we see that there are some of them, and these are typically things in the web that are not auto discovered because the the if you have a log source in the web, it's not going to send you stream you logs. Uh, you actually need to go there with some credentials and typically certificates and and establish a secure connection and then go every five minutes or so and pull those logs or have those sent to you. So, so you get the point. I mean, those things in the cloud, at least in the stage of today's technology, they cannot be auto discovered, uh, and and that's why some of them are. But, and and particularly if we see, if we look here for for example, let me give you an example for Cisco FMC. Uh, if we search in in my logs uh, as an example of those, the getting these things to work is a lot harder than when you have them on print because that stuff is on the cloud and, and you don't know exactly what is it that is not working. Do I have the right credentials? Do I have the right DNS? Uh, the, what, is, what are the parameters? What is it that I'm missing? Is this their fault, my fault? Where do I fix it? And, and for that, uh, for those things that are not uh, auto-discoverable, there's something called a test. And when, when the the parser is created, these, these test conditions are actually incorporated. And when I click on it, notice that I did this, uh, it goes into all those steps. In this particular case, there are six and everything is working except for this last far. I know this server has been uh, turned down. So, so the test is going to fail there. But I know exactly that this is not a problem with my credentials. This is not a problem with my connectivity over the year. I can reach that box, but it's that box that is down. So I can actually call support and, and get that actually fixed. Now, another thing that is uh, rather interesting, uh, if I were to add a new log source for these that are not auto discoverable, or if I want to add it for any reason manually, uh, I just want to highlight the. I'm going to click here on new log source, and you can add it in bulk. I say I have 200 Windows servers and 300 uh, Linux servers or whatever, uh, so you can add them in bulk. You don't have to do it one by one. But, but I want to scroll here over the vast amount of parsers that QReader has out of the box that can auto discover the things that you have. And there are separate videos in case that what you want is not in this extensive list. It's actually easy to either get this uh, by creating your own parser with a, with a DSM editor, a GUI way of doing it, or, and if it's a, an external restful thing, there's also the same methodology for, for doing that, right? So, but once you have those things really sending logs into QReader, uh, the most valuable piece of this technology, I, in my view, is the rules that QReader has. Let me actually go here 
and take the, in, in the use case manager is the best place for dealing with curator rules and here in my demo system there are 835 and you can with a tremendous level of ease in fact there's a search here that helps you to do that you can even add additional rules that will work with those logs that are being parsed now that are understood so the parser extract different components of, of the logs assign them to different categories and properties and boom your rules are now firing offenses when 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 it's appropriate to actually do that uh, and it's very rare that you will have to create your own rules you may but uh, most likely you will modify an existing one and actually uh, add them but the, that, that's why curator can begin to deliver value so rapidly with just understanding what's out there assigning a parser boom boom and then the the rules begin to work now with all this amount of rules in my demo system there are 135 and, and again there are very many more in the app exchange that I could add uh, if you don't do this properly you, you with all that logic cranking on all those logs you may get and flows you may get some false positives and for that uh, this free app the use case manager that you can add into curator has a tuning app and there are separate videos that shows you how you actually uh, work through these tiles and get uh, only the right rules working in the right way and understand what is it that is uh, generating noise versus value uh, but uh, following this step and there are the separate videos that shows uh, this you can find it on the PDF that is in the box public box folder which link is in the video description of this one and all my videos uh, you can follow the steps on tuning uh, your curator system so it, it can really if you put the love into it it's, it can really begin to deliver value very very rapidly